have uh, I have some chicken shack that I shall be eating while we're doing this. If that's, that's fine. Good. That's that's oh, great. Nice. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome everyone to the Survivor Yukon season two post show. Um, we have um, a new guest this week and uh, an old guest. We have Carson back uh, filling in. So thank you, Carson, for doing that. We're glad to have you back. Absolutely. Um, so if everyone wants to go around, uh, say hi. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, always, my name is. Uh, I want to just say say me again, Ethan, so they know who I am because they don't know who that no one cares about you. Um, I'm the host of Survivor You Come. My name's Ryan. Uh, uh, hi, sorry for that. Uh, I'm Ethan, the resident loudmouth who comes on here every week. Um, happy to be back. And this was an amazing episode. I reached out to our editor, like, holy shit, nice job. Um, so I can't wait yeah, to break this down. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm Mark. I'm from season one of Survivor Yukon. If you guys remember me, if you don't, go watch the season. It was fun. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. This episode was great. My first time on here. So I'm excited to break some stuff down. Hello, hello. I was here last week. I'm here again. My name is Carson. I played on Survivor Northwestern season one and I'm on uh, the prod team now for the future. Uh, yes. Reinforcing what people said. Crazy episode. Yeah. Super excited to talk about it. If I didn't know what happened in it going in, I would have been shocked. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's the goal, I believe. Um, I didn't, and I was shocked. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so just off the bat, I want to make an announcement. Uh, Kiwan was supposed to come on tonight, um, had to drop last minute. But he will. we will be recording an interview with Kiwan uh, in the next week. Hopefully... We can upload that either by net before next episode or sometime next week. Obviously, we have big double episode next week. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, no key one tonight, unfortunately, but we will have that content out soon. We will hear from key one. I still want to get to talk to the guy. But, uh, yeah, so I think because of that, maybe a little shorter night, which is a bit nice, but this is a big episode, so I think that works out. So um, let's get right into it. So we are start of the episode. We move in on Kira. Kira's obviously mad Kiwan didn't use the idol. She would prefer he'd have kept it, obviously, and got someone else out. But otherwise, you might as well use it because the idol's out of the game either way. But as we, the viewers, know, um, that idol is fake. So it's not really... A, not really that big a deal ultimately if anything it's worse for kira and uh we see this from robbie early on robbie saying kira's fake idols out of the game um and it's benefited him so far because kira doesn't think he has the idol but um but like what what was the point then how did that benefit you that only your best ally didn't know you had the idol because she was the only one that knew there's a fake idol and then in the episode anyways robbie plays the idol so, <laughs> so and so here's the thing it doesn't really matter because kira goes out technically so like kira's not really going to be mad at him kira's gone but what, what, what was what was i mean we've talked about this over and over but i guess this is the end of it because it's gone and so is Kira, but uh, what 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 is the thought process here? Do we have we figured it out? After no. <laughs> no. The first note I wrote down, uh, well, the first two notes I wrote down um, at the very beginning of the episode, Kira hasn't been to a tribal and has now been burned at two of them. Um, <laughs> I mean, the Edge vote and the Kiwan vote with her idol, and then my next note. Is that is when Robbie's saying, like, I'm kind of glad the fake idol's out of here. It, it was not great that Kira had it. I'm like, no shit, it wasn't great that Kira had it. But I just sort of was laughing, like, Robbie, worried about a fake idol? That doesn't seem in character. Something's off here. And it, it just from there, this episode had legs and takes off. Like, what a fun start to it. Yeah, Robbie's relieved about a problem he put himself. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I would be relieved if I'm Robbie. This like trap that I built that was ultimately gonna blow up eventually 
suddenly disappears and it's nothing to do with, you know, anything that he'd done. Big lucky break followed by an incredibly unlucky episode for Robbie. Yeah. The, yeah, that's like the perfect way to put it, honestly, is like he finally catches a break with this. He finally he's done overplaying and then all right, shoot. <laughs> now, uh, now he's got issues going in the marriage. Yeah, Jacob wants this point out. It was never a good idea to have your closest <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really doesn't make sense. Idea. Especially because we'll talk about this a bit more. Alex, uh, he ends up telling Alex about it anyways, which is just uh, wild. I'm pretty sure I called Alex last week, didn't I? I thought, wasn't yeah. Alex my winner pick last week? Yep, you did. Wait, not episode for Alex. I totally said it. Carson buying stock right here. I, He's the- I am all in on Alex, but we'll talk about that. You know, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, so Alex in this episode, speaking of Alex, um, he talks about in the beginning, he told Kiwan to play his idol in an effort that he, he – Alex thought the idol was fake, but he said, tell Kiwan to play it. This makes the, the people that are working with Kiwan kind of trust Alex because it's like, oh, Alex was throwing, lending a hand to him. And uh, in some ways, like if the idol was real – I don't know how great that, I mean, because obviously Kiwan thought it was real. I don't know how great that is because, I mean, then you lose your number in Maddie. But I, I think as we see in the episode, it, it works out well for him. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, I mean, I think it literally cuts at one point to Robbie, like stealing the words out of Alex's mouth where he's like, oh, well, I know Alex told Kiwan to play his idol. So, like, that definitely makes me trust him a little more. Like, it's just <laughs> exactly what he wanted, really. He's smart. He's smart. That's a good move because he's he knows the position he's in. He knows that even if things go bad, it's not going to be him. And so, and he knows that the merge is coming. So he wants to have options, and he wants to be like people talk. It's not like real Survivor where you get voted out and you're shipped to another island and you have no communication with people in game. Like this is College Survivor. People are still on campus. People are still roommates. And word's going to get around, like, what happened. Um, and he kind of bet on the fact that putting a little bit of goodwill in Kiwan, while he knew that Kiwan was going out the door, was going to pay dividends for him. And it totally worked. It was so smart. Yeah. I, Alex, showing his big brain right there, um, he ingratiates himself with the enemy while keeping his allies around. And if you can have friends in every corner, especially in what unfolds to be a maddening merge right at the beginning there, um, you're in great shape to, to have power coming out of that chaos. Because things are going to spiral for a minute. We may shift in one direction or the other, but he'll have control over what happens in whatever direction and have options out of that. So I think excellent play on Alex's part, and it worked to a T for him. All right, so next we, we hear a bit from Heidi. Heidi is out of the hot seat of this terrible tribe swap for her after Shane was going. It really looked like uh, she was likely the next to go there. And uh, she's, she's in a brand new spot. Merge completely changes the game. And uh, how, do you guys, how do you guys see her position? Um, h- how has it changed for the better, like coming out of the swap and into this episode? And coming out of this episode, even with what you know now and how the vote went. Yeah. So, I mean, we speculated last week about how she was going to be in a really important position in the merge because she was going to be that swing vote. The power of being the swing vote kind of fell away from her in this episode. um, And and it fell into Alex and Bijan's hands. Um, So in that sense, I don't think that she maintained the relationships that she needed to on one side of that pendulum. Um, She obviously ended up on the right side of the vote, um, which is great for her for the future. And I think that she's, you know, been a good player and been present and has a good shot to go deep into this game, especially when you end up on the right side of the merge vote. That's a great sign. Um, But she didn't, from my perspective, she had the power to decide which way the vote was going to go. And she had the power to decide who went home because the swing vote is so important. Um, And it just kind of fell from her grasp. And, um, and she just ended up being a number on one of the sides and lost all that agency. I, I 
Yeah, I think you sort of nailed that, Reed. Um, Heidi was in this great spot, but then we saw that her relationships with that Kemba tribe really were to that point where she was so far at the bottom of that tribe, mm -hmm. it wasn't even a relationship. So it, it did push her to be on the side with Maddie, Carolina, Bijan, Alex there, but it, it felt like she didn't even have an option um, mm -hmm. after after those lines were drawn. Um, it, it leaves, again, being, being in the numbers coming out of Emerge, especially when you have that crazy split and you only have a group of five, which is now leading instead of like a bigger group of seven or something, huge spot to be in to get deep. But it, it did feel like what could have been her moment didn't end up being that. We'll see if she gets another chance down the road. Yeah, it's kind of interesting going off of talking about Alex, who was kind of on the bottom all game now and finally kind of flips the script. Whereas I feel like Heidi now, she's been on the bottom and her play here is to kind of fall back a little bit and go under the radar here. She's just happy to not be the target anymore. Yeah. Whereas I think Alex is really starting to try and take control as that swing vote. Like you kind of said, Carson with Bijan there. Um, so it was interesting the two different directions their games went there. Yeah, neither one is, is better than the other, I suppose. It's just a different strategy. Um, one definitely has more agency and also calls more attention. So that's the toss up that you have to consider. And so I hope it works out for Heidi. I really like Heidi. Um, and I think that, like I said, she's in a good position. Um, but I think you nailed it, Mark. Like she's trying to fall under the radar a little bit and just be safe in the numbers. And I think that that's not bad for nine people, you know? Yeah. And I still think she's, you know, she's making plays. We hear at the very end before Tribal how Bichon talks about oh, well, Heidi might convince us to vote for Kira. And that's something that, you know, that conversation we assume happens right after, right before Tribal. But uh, we uh, obviously it ends up convincing him, okay, it's worth it to split the votes here. So um, she definitely still had an impact. All right. So let's move into this challenge. So this is a challenge we saw in season one. Mark actually participated in the next promptly did not participate um, after not so long but um we this challenge is you have popsicle stick and you're balancing dice on the popsicle stick on uh, your mouth the longest to do that um wins instead of immunity this week we, we switched it up a little we had an uh, immunity idol not a hidden immunity idol it's very public a public immunity idol that you can win and the way it works is you can just play at tribal and Basically, you're immune just as if you had a necklace, or you can, uh, um, or you can save it. But the the downside is you can't really play on anyone else. You you can't be tricky with it. It's something you have to keep to yourself. And then second place is a secret advantage. Uh, it ends up being the tribal skip, as we called it at the time before. This was pre-safety without power era. We thought of it first. You big brain that one. <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, our turnaround time isn't uh, as good as you know, the multi-million dollar uh, corporation. But uh, yeah, so Kira ends up getting the tribal skip for second and, and uh, Maddie the, the necklace for first. So we'll talk about that in a sec. But let's go on, talk about this challenge a little. I like how Bijan goes out in like 0.5 seconds. How hard is it to Yeah, at least that'd be Bijan. You did beat Bijan. You were much better than Bijan. This challenge, when when we tested this one, we never had seven dice. The girls at the end, that was insane. That was very impressive because it's it's almost like 15 minutes at that point. It ends up your jaw hurts and like the weight adds up towards the end, even though they're just dice. It was something. I was impressed. But but Bijan going out in two seconds because his thing was like this the whole time <laughs> was Really funny. Uh, Bijan, for those who don't know, is in med school right now, and I hope he's not trying to be a surgeon because he's shaky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was not his challenge to win. I'd like to pass judgment on them, but I know deep in my heart that I would be absolutely terrible at that challenge. Uh, I would drop out so fast. So... I, I honestly, I respect how long that they lasted. I think that if I were to play, me and Bijan would be, would be pretty similar in our challenge performance. See, I, I wonder for this challenge, this is a challenge we've done twice now. Um, yeah, I believe, I believe Alex says, uh, 
this challenge of different rules in season one. Yeah, in season one, I think you could only stack them on top of each other, whereas this season you could do like two on one layer, two on the other. So yeah. that makes it easier, and they help prop each other. Just because the season one one was so short. So yes, but Mark, everyone in season one still made it longer than Bijan with the easier rules. So. That is true. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so I'm wondering what what is the best strategy for this challenge? Because I see, I think I was thinking about this today. I think it's to do it like sideways, like Hope and Kira were doing. Because you have like more surface area on your your side teeth because they're wider than your front teeth, which are like thinner. I feel like that would make it steadier, but it's also like a weirder angle. So, so like it might be hard to like place them like this rather than in front of your eyes. I was kind of wondering about that, but Maddie won with the regular strats. So I don't know. Yeah, the I, regular, feel like I, I feel like I would have tried with yours. Yeah, I agree with you, Gray. I feel like it's worse just because you like you shake up and down more, whereas when you go sideways, at least you can like bite down with more teeth. Uh, it, like, it's like, definitely sturdier. I feel like I would just try to engage my tongue in that challenge. My tongue action don't because, that long. because like I don't know, it's a pretty strong muscle. So <laughs> uh i'm a bio student uh yeah the, the tongue's a pretty strong muscle um that's what i would do but i have no idea. So i'm reading the comments as i come i love you Bijan. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are my favorite character out of all this i i had a note about Bijan before the challenge even um when we're just like getting merge reactions and he's like, I just wanted to get to the merge. I'm like, no, you didn't. You wanted to, you said from day one, you wanted to win and you never said anything else. That was the biggest lie of the <laughs> whole episode. Was like, I was I to go this far. <laughs> Bijan is here to win and he he will continue to, to slit throat and do what he needs to, to try and get to that end. I'll tell you what, he has increased his probability of winning with the move that he made tonight. What a killer move. <laughs> it, it was crazy. It was crazy to see. I mean, you got these sides that are kind of 5-5, five, five, and they really pulled it off. Um, so the two things that come out of this challenge, Maddie wins this public idol, and Kira wins this tribal skip. So let's talk about the public idol a bit. Um what do you guys think of a public idol that everyone knows about? Do you think it was played correctly like Maddie did in this episode? Just get rid of it as it is. Um, use it as an individual immunity. It's out of the way. Or do you think um, she could have been more careful with it and saved it for a day when maybe she actually was the main target, as obviously in this episode she doesn't get the majority of the votes, though she does get three votes. I think she did the right thing, given her situation and given all of the moving pieces around her. Um, because her five, in order to, to win that vote, was relying on the other group to split. So that's already a lot of faith you're putting in like the story you've worked. So um, if it doesn't go that way, if you end up with a 5-5 five, five split, you don't want to go to rocks and go out with that idol. I think just playing it, getting it out of the way was the right thing to do because People are going to come for her the next round if she has it anyways. Um, it's it's a huge target, and it, it's not one she can shed without playing it. So might as well and and focus on creating a new game out of that. Yeah, what a bullseye she just got for winning that immunity. And, yeah, you play it. You play it the first time you can so that people aren't concerned about it. You tell people you're planning on playing it. You tell them the second you win the challenge, you're like, I'm just going to play this because it's pretty much an individual immunity. You try to play it off. I think she did exactly what she needed to do. Um, and at the end of the day, like phrasing it as if she won immunity, I think paints a little bit of a smaller target than if she was like, I have an idol, which just people associate differently. Um, mm -hmm. Even though they were pretty much the same thing. Like this was an individual immunity necklace she could use whenever she wanted. Um, but using it that week, just like, don't worry about it. You know, don't, don't worry about that. I'm playing it this week. Uh, yeah. Good move. There's a lot of game left. Just make sure you're in it. I think was the right idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think the merge vote two is so important already that having safety at that either way was just really nice for them. And I think part of the reason Robbie played his idol is seeing Batty play hers. 
Because, you know, we see that he calls her bluff. He's going for her. He's going to try and vote for Maddie here, which I thought was interesting. I don't know if that would have been the strategy I would have taken, targeting the person who just won the public idol and who's, yeah. like, not really playing it off. You know, I don't know how much he talks specifically to her, but I thought that was a, an interesting move that came out of this is that, hey, we could target her anyways. Yeah, I think it's interesting because even though she just plays it like it is immunity and like uh, she's immune that round as she would be if she had regular immunity, the the fact that it is an idol instead of that necklace is part of what leads to this split plan that obviously uh, sends the Moynihan's uh, down into a tough spot after this episode uh, in the minority. But uh, so... Post-challenge, uh, Kira talks a little about this uh, tribal skip, uh, this safety without power. Um, it's the second advantage Kira's gotten. She got the idol clue, obviously, that her and Aj, uh, didn't find, and uh, Bijan kind of took stole that. And then, uh, so she's talking a little bit about that, how that makes her a target, but she also recognizes uh, Robbie is a shield for her. She obviously seems very aware of that target he holds right now. So, uh, I mean, Kira takes the hit this episode, but what, what did you think of her positioning and her, her reads at this point in the game? I mean, I think she's partially right that Robbie is a shield for her, but it's, it's tough when Robbie's the one with the idol and he's the one who, uh, you know, is just, you're guilty by association at this point is kind of what we end up seeing is that he's such a large target that anyone associated with him is also going to get targeted because if you're it's either you're with Robbie or against Robbie right now I feel like yeah getting advantages has not been good for her or her allies um you know it's <laughs> two advantages and two well eliminations that were directly tied to them to some extent um that's the trouble with public advantages. And that's why I think that playing the idol was the best move is because she didn't let that happen to her, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, I, everyone, everyone likes Kira, but they don't like that she's with Robbie and everyone hates Robbie in this game. <laughs> so it's also amusing to me. Everyone in the game thought Kiwan's idol was fake. It was. Everyone except Kira. Everyone in the game thinks Robbie has an idol. He does. Everyone <laughs> that except Kira. <laughs> so she's the closest oh. ally to the guy who made the fake idol and has the real one. And she's the only one who doesn't know either of these things. And that whole like arc spins my mind to this day. <laughs> How she had the most luck getting advantages, the worst luck getting targeted, and somehow the least information out of anyone in the game. Yeah, I do feel bad because it really seems like her close Sally Robbie is in a way steering her game wrong. Uh, a lot, a lot of this. I mean, her moves and reads are based around Robbie's like information that she assumes he's her close Sally, and he is. But he's really, he really just uh, effed a lot of things up here. And and obviously there their trust in Alex and Bijan ultimately is, is a bigger part of this downfall. Um, so right now it seems like coming out of uh, the episode uh, or coming out of the challenge, Moynihan and Matt seem to be together. It seems like Matt's leaning more towards uh, that side and those bonds at this point. Um, they want to break up the Maddie and Carolina duo which I, I think it makes sense, you know, they know each other, they're not on your side. That seems like a natural way to do things if you can work it out. And uh, um, so then we get this, uh, oh, and then of course there's, on the other side we have the Tarasi tribe, uh, Alex, Carolina, Maddie, Bichon, plus Heidi, who's kind of just like, yeet, I gotta get out of there. And they wanna target, they're talking about targeting Barrett or Matt, to throw it off so Robbie doesn't idle. So at this point, they, they have the right idea. They want they don't want to vote into an idol, but uh, 
di completely different target than what ends up being. I forgot and, that they had discussed Barrett and Matt. Like when that happened on the episode, I was like, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> it's like, I had forgotten that those were conversations that were had. Um, so I think it was interesting um, who, whose names came up first, because for me, I wouldn't have tried to vote um, Carolina Maddie. I think um, on that sort of like setting, I would want to keep that pair together so that when things break apart, you know those two are going together. So I would try to get two votes in one by by getting them to line up with me. I think there's value in that. I think it's tough though because you're, you're in a. Even. What's that? <laughs> so that's presumptuous that they would want to work with you. Well, that's the thing is they did they didn't want they didn't think that Carolina and Maddie wanted to work with them, and so. You need to split them up because it is two votes in one. My thought on the issue with Robbie having the idol, which I know we're kind of moving a little away from, but it was it was a good thought in the chat, is um, when someone has an idol they're, and you are not with them, you're not in alliance with them, you either A, vote for someone else to flush it, or B, you blindside them. Um, and those are the two solutions. So this was the ideal situation for them because they eliminated somebody else and flushed the idol uh, at the same time, which is one of those two great options. And they certainly didn't feel confident about blindsiding him because it was a contentious vote. So I think that it worked It worked out great. Um, and I, I can see why they targeted the way that they did. Yeah, I, th I, think, it, I think it worked out perfectly as we see. And uh, so... Heidi's talking a bit. She's like, we need to bring up, basically she's just laying it out on why this alliance of five is formed. We need to bring up, break up this big voting block of the Reds, and then Matt is like pretty well in with them at this point. We need to let it be more of a 1v1, which like, you know, that that's that's fair game. That makes sense. That, that's, what, that's what I think most uh, players in that position would say. And then uh, we cut to Bijan, and Bijan's like, yeah, well, Heidi could like kind of mention that and like, I don't. I don't want that. If that, if this is my side winning out, if if it's my side winning out, I just want to annihilate the other side and get get to final five and play my game. So I, I think uh, I think we see Heidi learning and picking up the pieces a little, but not not in the right ways necessarily. As she uh, makes it clear to Bijan uh, that she's a little more of a gamer than he thought. Okay. I think it's interesting that Bijan is the one with that reaction, just going off of what he's already done in the game where at his six person alliance. And then, you know, around later he's like, you know what though, we gotta get rid of Adge. Like it yeah, seems exactly. like he might say that in theory, that sounds like a good idea, but it, that hasn't been how he's played. So I was a little surprised that that was something that Bijan had to say. That's but, true. That is a bit much. I agree to, to a point where they were on those swapped tribes and things things were more broken apart and a little more fluid, but now they're in a merge. You're with these people the rest of the way. You're not expecting it to, to break up into blocks where you have to worry about who you're aligned with. Like everyone's in front of you the whole time. So you can sort of draw a line more here. Um, if you get down to the final five with those five people, that's that going forward. Whereas um, originally he was on a tribe that could have swapped again, and we didn't know who would end up where on a merge. So you have to you have to be a little more cagey pre-jury uh, pre-merge there to figure out if I vote this person out, is it going to cut off alliances here? Whereas now I have my group of five, so I think that's why he was able to take such a hard stance. He could flip it though. He he, he has done it in the past. He could, but like you want to exude to your alliance members and to everybody in the game that like you you want them to know where you stand enough that you're not this question mark. You don't want to piss off the people that you're voting against, but if they know where your vote is going after you've drawn this line post merge, then they know like that they need to approach you and beg pretty much or and the people on your side know that that you're voting with them. It's that so is exactly what Bijan wanted, people begging. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's serious. Final nine, you need to make clear where you are because you don't want to be considered a flip-flopper. You want to be considered like solidly 
in one position with options and like malleable. And I think that he's doing a good job of exuding that energy to his tribe. Um, and I think that it's going to serve him well. Because last week, I thought Moynihan was going to be on top. I was wrong. I said the only reason if they're not on top is because Bijan pulls something, and he did, and my boy Alex also did. Um, so I just think, like, this is the best spot that these two can be in right now because they still are the two with the greatest relationship with those four that are on the outside. So they're still in the swing position. But nobody's going to fault him if they vote the same way again because the line has been drawn. Exactly. I, I, yeah, I, I think Alex and Bijan are really the stars of this episode. They, they really show. Um, honestly, I think a master class in how to be the swing vote at like an early merge because I, I, I really, like, like you said, Carson, like, what are the Reds' options right now? The Reds' op best options are probably to run back to Alex and Bijan, which is where you want to be. You, you don't want to be like the repercussion vote if, you, if you're on the fence. You want to be the one with the options and the one that keeps um, having people come to you. That's just um, dependent on like how well they handle those relationships in the next few days post this vote, too. You know, if they if they leave that door open or if they do not, it'll be very interesting to see how they handle communicating with the four people that were left out of this vote that were, that were blindsided. Um, Cause I think that they should continue communication there. You know, eventually things are going to change and you want to have as many you know, options as you can, but also I don't know what they're going to do. It'll be interesting to see. Absolutely. Um, so we get to another scene. Um, we have the three girls that aren't the two rower girls. We have Kira, Hope, and Heidi. They kind of meet up, and they're, they're talking about Alliance, uh, kind of bridge the gap, maybe uh, try and bring Heidi onto their side a little. Um, obviously, it doesn't really come to much fruition of anything in this episode since uh, Heidi sticks with the Tarasis and uh, Kira goes home. But what do, you, what do you think of this Alliance? Do you think... There's, they should have pursued it more. You think Kira, I mean, not Kira, Heidi should have considered it more. Do you think there's still options in the future for her and Hope together? Or do you think that's been severed? What is, the, what is there to think of that? This was the alliance I wanted to happen. Um, when it was happening, like, I was like, ooh, go, go girls. I'd love that. But um, it didn't pan out. And I think it was the best move for Heidi that it didn't pan out. Um, I think she picked the right side to vote with here. Um, for her long-term game. It, it, I think it does ha leave options open with Hope, though. Because um, Hope is already saying that she doesn't trust Robbie that much. Um, I don't know how, how deep a connection she has with Barrett, and um, I don't know how much she, she actually like connects with Matt. So it, it sort of moves Heidi right up the ladder for Hope. So that definitely leaves doors open down the road, um, I think. Having those conversations, even if it's not how you vote that round, sets you up for potential votes the next time. So I think it was the right things. I think that was maybe one of Heidi's best parts, except for picking the right side to vote with. I think that was the best thing she did in this episode, was was building that connection with Hope even a little. Yeah, and I, I totally agree there. Like I think anytime you can give yourself more options is huge and you know, as the numbers dwindle down, who knows, maybe Hope ends up being the vote she needs coming later on in this merge. So, yeah, I think you have to kind of cut your losses with Kira. Um, but hopefully going forward, she and Hope can actually make a connection. And that's someone outside of the Bijan Alex swing vote who might be able to make something happen now because she actually took the time to reach out to them. Right. Come seven, because uh, Heidi has, has a, a relationship with the other two girls, Maddie, Carolina, there's four girls right there if they can all make it. So that's that's a flip on the numbers as well. So I think it was a great way to set up new swings that aren't built yet, but have a chance. Yeah, good for the girls. What, were, what did they start with? What were like them? Yeah, yeah, they were they, no, six. There were six. Six of them to start. It was, uh, yeah, it was nine to six. And now we're down, we were at five, five at the merge. They kind of, they brought it back and so. 
Good. Were all three of the people that were removed in the beginning of the game women? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that really is why and there was the imbalance. Don't exist. <laughs> okay, so so now we get to this part in the episode where Robbie is chatting a bit with Alex. So Robbie trusts Alex a little more because he recognizes we're at 5-5, five, five, we need someone. And he's chatting Alex up because Alex um, like nudged Kiwan in. Alex has been feeding them some stuff that he doesn't feel safe with like Maddie and Heidi because they voted against him at this first tribal on a starting tribe when Sawyer got voted out. And then uh, so Robbie and Alex meet up and Robbie's like, Spilling on some info, he's like, "Oh, you should work with us. You should work with us." And then Robbie tells Alex he has the idol. Now, this is interesting because you know, I think in some ways there there's ways to pivot, like having an idol on your side um, to get someone over. But I really don't think this is the spy. I think it's even more like crazy that he does this when his ally Kira doesn't even know he has the idol. So now he's like potentially like breaking off that like trust even though it doesn't come to anything secure is gone um and uh i th i think it's funny because he tells alex um he has the idol and alex is like yeah everyone knows that because <laughs> it, it's like the worst kept secret in the game right now and alex says here yeah i think the fact that robbie planted a fake idol I, like everyone knew after the shane fake idol that like probably robbie has the real idol so they used the real clues for the fake idol <laughs> yeah so yeah because yeah because when you're the real clues lead to the fake idol and and you find the fake idol and it doesn't work, then you Remember know the person who gave out the real clues, which was mainly Robbie, is the one who has the idol. Like you can kind of logistically uh, work that one backwards. Um, so yeah, so a uh, big rip there. And I think there's some positive intentions there, and but uh, obviously uh, it doesn't really make much sense i think and i think what alex does is uh, ultimately correct i think that this is just one of the strengths of alex this episode Bijan's talking to him about his idol you know like he robbie's talking to him about his idol suddenly he's getting information from a lot of different places and is in a really powerful position not just this week but with information that's going to inform decisions and gameplay for the next few weeks. Um, and so I get why Robbie did it. I, I'm not sure if we've covered if Robbie knew that everybody knew he had the idol or not, but like if everyone knows you have the idol, you might as well tell somebody uh, to, to make them trust you, right? Oh, I want to share this with you so that you know that I trust you. It's like, well, everybody knows already. You might as well. Um, I don't think that was his intention. But um, I think this is that this moment is less important for Robbie and more important for Alex and showcasing Alex's capabilities as a player. Yeah, I think uh, I think Robbie had an idea that that info might be out there or talked about, but I don't think he was like lock set on that was in his intent with that move. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of both, but yeah. I, I think Robbie makes the right pitch. I think saying like, hey, I do have the idol. This is a pivotal vote here. Um, you want to vote on the side that has an idol because then you know where it is going forward and it's not getting played against you. And that is that is a good pitch, but it's to the wrong person in this situation. Right pitch, wrong person. Because Alex already knows at this point about Bijan's idol. They're the only two who know about that one. And... Alex is already locked in and has information coming from every direction. You want to make that pitch to someone who is genuinely like a little bit lost and on the bottom. Alex did a good job pretending he was selling himself as such saying he didn't have these relationships, but he did have them. So unfortunately for Robbie, I, I think it was not a bad move to try and tell someone you have the idol and get them to flip to your side. But Alex was the wrong person for that. 
Who, who do you think is the better person to go to here, though? I don't think there's a better I, option. I think Heidi might have been a better move there. I don't know that there was any inroads where Heidi would end up trusting Robbie at all, no matter what. But I think just with how things were lining up, I think Heidi was a, was more towards that bottom, genuinely, being from the Kemba tribe and disconnected from that group of four um, that she ends up voting with. I think if he had tried to reel her in, he had a better chance than getting Alex to flip over. I see why he did Alex. We, uh, I mean, yeah, just a tough spot for for Robbie and a tough look for Robbie. Yeah. It almost feels like too little too late. Like if he had made the play with the idol last round with Kiwon, with the actual idol, then things look a lot differently. All of a sudden he has the numbers and things are a lot easier for him at the Burge without an idol. So, oh, if he'd given that idol to Kiwon, it would have gone home with him. <laughs> yeah, unless he goes home with the real yeah, one. Too. If you could yeah, actually commit him to play so it. Well, he, he could have told Kiwon outright, like, just play it. Like, yeah. just do it. But, like, yeah, I, I mean, obviously if he was like, oh, Kiwon, use your best judgment, then we might have just seen <laughs> yeah. Robbie's idol go home instead. Yeah, and I think that's kind of – it feels like a lot of these moves were rushed by Robbie now. Like, they didn't – he's running into issues with things that he did previously in the game now. He's kind of broken a lot of ties, and it's – yeah, his game's kind of in pieces right now. And so I get that he was kind of desperate. You know, maybe if I show my Alex, my idol to Alex, he'll be the vote that we need to flip. And, you know, I think he got caught up playing too hard too fast there again. And uh, definitely – Took a bullet for that one. Okay. Yeah, Alex says Robbie also told me that Cures Advantage was a tribal skip. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that that's rough. That that is big and not a good look. Too much info. Right. Too much information is power. I don't know why everyone trusts Alex as much as they do. They're they're just feeding him everything. <laughs> they really shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear what story he was telling them. Because it was very convincing, apparently. It was like a month with Kira, she still doesn't know about the idol, but five minutes with Alex and you know, <laughs> the game plan, like, what happened? It was almost uh, two months, dude. That was like day 50. Yeah, it was day 50 something, something because uh, we had spring break in between, so there, there was a big jump oh, in the yeah. middle. I think I think right right before the the Kiwan tribal, there was a jump. So yeah. Um, Chris uh, put his best Trump impression. He said there was no excuse for Robbie to be speaking at Alex Spell. He already had Matt Kier, Hope, and Barrett. Dumb, sad. I mean, <laughs> that's only five of ten, so you got to do something unless yeah, you want to perfectly spike the idol play. I'm not going to be looking at rocks. That would be the shittiest spot. Like, you're not even close to the end. It's not like I've run out of options at this point. There's ten people. You should not be going to rocks. I mean, Millennials versus Gen X, they went to Rocks at Final 10. Wouldn't be me. Wouldn't be you. I, I think. I uh, went out first. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about Rocks at Final 10. Well, but it's so fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, if it's not for a million dollars, I'd, I'd say yeah. it's so Michigan cool. Season 3, I think, had Rocks at 10, too. They were at 10 or 12. Which they had really Rocks cool. in the pre merge. Yeah, they yeah, did. They, it was a six-person tribe, and they went to rock. The it was two six-person tribes, to be fair. Oh, That's yeah. sick. It was sick. It was heartbreaking. Michigan, right. agree. <laughs> yes, always, always stand Michigan. Um, so these, so now, so now we get to the point in the episode right before the vote, a little here. Uh, <laughs> Bijan and Alex. Um, they make it seem like they want to be involved in this split. So Bijan's like, yo, Robbie thinks everyone's on his side kind of except for uh, he Heidi and then uh, Carolina Maddie, the, the rower duo. So Robbie's like, so Bijan's like, oh, why don't I offer a split plan? Like make it seem like um, we're trying to like dodge Maddie's idol, but if she doesn't play it, we can vote Maddie out. And uh, if not, we get Maddie's closest ally out. We break up this duo where, in reality, um, Alex and Bijan <laughs> are just going to stick with their side. and They, they just, just kind of play the middle and be trustworthy enough. I think this is interesting. 
kind of crazy that this works. I think, I think Bijan obviously is in the thick of things as always, but I think it's really Alex in this episode that uh, gets it done and establishes that, that trust that they're willing to make this move. I mean, I think, uh, I think convincing a group to do a vote split at final 10 uh, happens more often than you'd think. You're talking to three people who did that this summer. Um, <laughs> uh, but it, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to sell if you, they really trust you because it's the smart thing to do, especially because she'd won immunity and it was kind of up in the air whether she was going to play it or not. Because if you can vote her out and she can't play it later, that's a great win. Like, yeah, I can totally see why that split vote plan um, worked the way that it did. Um, yeah, and and uh, <laughs> and uh, I can also see how that's a recipe for danger for that group of seven when two people win in the seven abuse it. Yeah, I I think part of how this all panned out is the fact that. The Kemba tribe was essentially Moynihan too, um, because you had that group of um, you had five people from an OG tribe, then four of them together for the entire rest of the pre-merge after the fall. Meanwhile, none of them have voted with um, Alex or Bijan, so they're really having. I think that's part of where like the overselling of Robbie comes from. He has to build these relationships. Like we've never voted with each other. We've never even sat at a tribal council together. So I have to build this relationship two months into the game and say, hey, let's vote together for the first time. Kira has to do that with fucking everyone because she hasn't voted with a single person yet. <laughs> um, so I think that's part of how it comes down to is they kind of have to trust Bijan and Alex because they don't want to go to rocks. They think they're in a better position. You only like threaten rocks if you think you're in the worst, the like worst position. So they sort of have to take Alex and Bijan and hope that it does work. Um, it doesn't. Bijan and Alex played it to a T, but I think part of that is is just with how the tribes split up and who who was really talking and working with who, um, really shook down how this um, connections went. Yeah, so we get to the vote here, and um, Maddie plays the idol, um, and then like. A second after Maddie stands up, Robbie's like, that's it. I'm playing mine. And uh, he obviously ends up burning um, his. But we, we think at a certain point in this episode that the majority did. May maybe they were successful in the split, but they put their five on Robbie. And uh, as it turns out, um, like Bijan said, they might do. If uh, it took some convincing, uh, they switched their vote to Kira and uh, basically checked off all the boxes. They, they got, they hit majority at the merge. They got Kira and her advantage out. They got Robbie um, is now idolless. Um, so I, I think this is a huge episode for the five that were in the majority because they basically uh, checked all the boxes about what was dangerous about that other side and have kind of diluted uh, that big dangerous core at this point. I, I, yeah, you said it. Yeah. You checked all the boxes. All the boxes. Robbie, Robbie went from the end of last episode where we were like, wow, he really escaped that whole fake idol shit. And then everything crashed at once on him and, and the rest of the Moynihan's there. And yeah, there, there's Heidi explaining it um, and how it all worked out. Um, and that is exactly how it shook down. They, every, every single thing they wanted to happen, happened. So that doesn't usually go that way in Survivor. Shit usually goes wrong. So good for them making it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so let's talk about Matt a little. So I feel like Matt was like a big... Um, kind of character uh, going the pre-merge. He seemed to have like some strong bonds in the original tribe with like Bijan Edge. Then Edge leaves. Then he's like formed some decent bonds with the Reds here. And now Matt has ended up. He chose a side. And he he chose poorly. So what, what do we what do we think of Matt's spot going forward? Is there room for Matt to bounce back out of this? 
guess. Yeah, maybe. Um, he'd have to get lucky, which he might, um, because I know for sure that right now nobody is going to defend him. So the way that he gets through this is if his side, while being decimated, is like he's not the target. And then eventually the numbers dwindle down to the point where people are trying to flip the game again. Um, that's how he gets through this. But like, he, he's nobody's first choice. He's nobody's second choice. Um, but he's also not the biggest threat. So I can see a world where he has no power for a couple of weeks, but it's still kicking when the game shakes up again. It really isn't up to him, though, I don't think. Yeah, I think he's definitely in a tough spot because I think, you know, maybe Robbie stays at the top of the list as far as threats go. But then from below that, it doesn't seem like there's a big consensus on who the big threats are going to be. And I think Matt might end up on like up higher on that list just because of the side he chose, you know not even for, you know, his big threat in the game. He's just, now he's on the wrong side. And when you're on the wrong side of the numbers, it's not a lot you can do. He needs to, you know, start building those relationships, I think, back up with those people on the other side if he wants to survive this because he's not getting any help from Robbie right now. Robbie's going to be, just from what we've seen, you know, he's a player. He's going to fight for himself. And, you know, if the one shield ahead of you wins immunity, you're in big trouble. So... Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for Matt. Because it's almost like now it's him against Robbie who's going to survive. I, I think Mark's hitting the nail on the head there. Um, unfortunately for Matt, I think if that five that is still together sticks together, his back is also up against the wall. Um, if Robbie wins immunity, it might be Matt next. Just because maybe you care about challenge threats. Maybe you care that... Matt didn't draw an original red buff, so um, he has he could build connections later. So that could even be a bigger threat to get rid of him because it's harder to group him in with the reds. That's that's the current grouping, but he wasn't born and raised there, so he may have a chance to move elsewhere. So if Robbie wins immunity, Matt could be in trouble. So Matt's best bet is probably to win immunity. So... We have a double episode going on next week. So we got two booths uh, next week. So who do you guys think is looking hot and who's not looking hot? Who's hot and not? Who is it as simple as who vote in the majority is looking good, who vote in the minority is looking bad, or uh, is there more to it than that right now? I know Carson's hot on uh, Alex. I am hot on Alex and I'm hot on Very hot on Alex and Bijan, yeah. Both of them are in a great spot. They're both extremely attractive men. Um, it's true. <laughs> uh, the knots, I mean, Robbie, he's in trouble. Um, Matt, if he gets unlucky, like who knows what name is going to come up in that, in that pool. I don't think it's as simple as 5v4. But there's a real chance that it could be. Like, yeah. there's a real chance that it could be as simple as 5v4. With Bijan, maybe it won't be. Um, you know, he likes to mix stuff up. But, yeah, it's not looking too good yeah. for them. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I think with a double episode, first half, probably going to be more of what we just saw. Probably some red decimation. When we when we have our second second round in that episode, maybe something happens um, because then the numbers start shifting to being smaller, where it takes fewer people to flip and make like your group. At this point, you want smaller groups. You don't want a different group of five because then you're just flip flopping and you don't actually have that much control. You want to get to a point where like I have a group of four, I have a group of three that can actually determine what happens. Mm -hmm. So when we, we get trust clusters. Yeah, that's right. the word for it. I don't like it, but I'm going to use it anyways. <laughs> I think I think if, if you can survive that first half and get to eight or get to seven, then you can really shake things up. So we may see just more of this, this Moynihan massacre to begin, but um, there's, there's always avenues in Survivor. Game's not over until it's over. Yeah, it's funny you said that. 
or sorry, Carson. Just funny you said that, Ethan, like final seven, final eight, you turn it up. That's something that, you know, I think Matt was talking about at the beginning of this episode is how he wants to turn it up. But it, you might have to turn it up sooner than later, right. you know? Now it, it might now be at the time, which I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. But go ahead, Carson, what were you saying? I'm just curious to see if and when Bijan is not on the same page as Alex. You know, like when that happens, I, I really don't know how that's going to go. Um, because at nine people left, only one of them could flip the other way. I don't know why they would. They have got a pretty good alliance going on. You know, Bijan has put a lot of trust in Alex, and it seems like he's the person that Bijan trusts most. I don't know why Bijan would do anything, and he's kind of the person that is interested in stirring the pot more frequently. Um, but I am curious to see, like, I don't see that lasting forever. Um, and I'm curious, is it at seven? You know, is it is it at six? At what point did these two realize that there's only one winner um, and that they're both playing hard and who realizes it first is going to be a really big deal? Um, yeah, I'm just curious about that. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Um, I had a, I had a funk Bijan quote as my last little bit to add. Um, and when you do draw your lines here in a merge vote and you end up with this five, four split, you can take some heat. And Bijan says, if they know it's me, so what? They'll come for me and I don't even care. And he's right. I think as far as the four people who were in the wrong on this vote, they're probably going to go after Bijan. Um, so take that he own own the game but uh other people within his five are going to realize that too so when are they going to be like hey if Bijan's getting all the credit for this i want some of that when we get towards the end so how long it takes for that to be an issue for him within his own group we'll see all right and that gets us to the end of the episode so do you guys have any other closing thoughts or anything you want to talk about um, right now? I'll, I'll skim chat, see if there's anything else we missed. What a journey for Kira. Very interesting survivor <laughs> journey. How did this happen? How did we get here? <laughs> How did we get here? Got booted at the first travel she went to and is a juror. She's yeah. not a juror. Oh, she's she's not not a juror. Oh, yeah. She did not make like jury. Unfortunately, that. Cover that, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I think I think I just briefly said that like Jerry Bates starts now. Yeah. yeah. Oh rip. Yeah, that's unfortunate. We, that was tough. We felt bad, but Kira Kira went to one tribal and lost three tribals was my takeaway from her game. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean it's an unfortunate aspect of again uh, we keep coming back to the, the three people that uh, uh were in the game early on. It would have been an eighteen person game. We would have merged at 11 and did like a jury starting there, normal stuff like that. But we had to kind of modify that function. Uh, I mean, it's either 10. I mean, you could do seven jury with a final three, which is, eh, and you could do seven final two, or um, you could do, I mean, you can't do eight final two. That doesn't really work. I don't really know what my credential's plan was. Um, or, or you could do... I mean, we're not, we weren't going to do a pre-merge person on the jury. That never makes sense. I don't, I hate when people do that because then you haven't, I mean, in college survivor, it's not as bad because technically you have the opportunity to meet everyone, but I still mm. don't like that. But um, yeah, um, so we ended up, uh, it's announced at the end of the episode, I think that it's a final two and we have a jury of seven. So uh, I did have that. Are, was it always going to be a final two or was that part of the editing that y'all did as well? We were going to do uh, a two with a uh, jury of nine originally. Got it. Yeah, and that got changed like day two. So it's yeah. not like we changed it later. Like when it was, a, it was just like as a circumstance of the modification, the the girls leaving the game. So yes, but from then on, it was a jury of seven final two. Um, so yeah, and, and we we always announced. See, here's, this is something I, I wonder because I've played a lot of orgs now, and. Uh, online reality, like survivor games. And I feel like some hosts like don't tell you if it's a final two or final three and on the show they don't. But I, we always tell our contestants at the beginning of the merge which one it is. Cause I feel like it's like 
unfair. Like you, the game is complete played completely different if it's a final two or final three in the merge, in my opinion. I don't know. Do you, do you guys, do you guys agree. agree with that? I agree. I'm glad we talked about hey, I know you agree with that. Yeah. We, we decided on that. I was I think thinking- the- Sorry, again, Mark, you go ahead. Sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, the whole point of having the final three is that, okay, you want players to get bigger targets out sooner, but if they're playing under, like, the pretense that it's a final two, then you don't get that result. So then, like, the dynamic doesn't end up changing until it's too late, and, like, then you're unsatisfied because people didn't plan for this. It's unsatisfying to watch people just get blindsided by twists when you could rather see people play well around it, I think. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, one of the best words of advice that I've heard from a fellow contestant, uh, one Aaron, uh, was to play as if it's always a final two. And um, I think that that's a really interesting viewpoint because you're exactly right, Mark. Like, if you're playing for three and then suddenly out of nowhere it's a final two, all that happens is people are disappointed with whoever got third place because they were going to win. But if you're playing for a final two at any given moment, then uh, hopefully that person sneaks by. I think my problem with that is if you're playing for a final two, your ideal position is to be the second biggest threat of a group of three. So at final three, um, you have a two-thirds chance to make the end. But if you're the second threat in a group of three and you hit final three and you have two or you hit final four and you have two bigger threats ahead of you, then you just lose a lot of the time. So that's my mindset on it. But yeah, I, I agree. It's, it's hard to finish the game. It's a very challenging it's hard to finish the game. Yeah. It is. The end game is a uh, really tough in survivor. And I mean in my experience that's where I usually uh, fail is on bad well, end you're the greatest Ryan. Same. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean Mark uh, <laughs> Not as much yet, also. Uh, Mark, uh, you good. That's you right. a good end game, Mark. I'd say. Yeah. I mean, we we like Alex probably would have taken the end, so that's that's a two thirds chance. That's pretty good. That's where yeah. you want to be. Yeah, not bad. You just don't want the the best immunity threat to be the one that won't take you down. So that's kind of yeah, happens. yeah. That was kind of unfortunate. But. <laughs> a bit of a tragedy. I still cry. So many uh, survivor. <laughs> Hard to keep track of them all. Um, so that brings us to the end of the episode uh, or the live show. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in, uh, checking everyone out again. Um, we'll be here next week. Um, might be a little later because I think the episode will be going later. It's a double episode, so we'll see uh, how long that runs. But as always, they, they come back up on YouTube afterwards so you can watch them on uh, day after whenever you want but uh just to close things out um my name is ryan uh thank you guys for watching if, if you guys want to go around uh, if you have anything new to say that you haven't said before um go for it sure um i wore my my grassroots soccer shirt today um i one of my favorite contestants ever is ethan's on oh big screen love it um and this is his his organization and charity. He helps co-found and still um, helps co-president. They're currently doing a, a big fundraising campaign for um, AIDS research and prevention um, in Western and Southern Africa. So great organization run by great people. Um, if you have a chance to look into it or, or a chance to donate, by all means. Also, um, continuing the Ethan's on plug, he's doing another campaign for Stand Up to Cancer. So, and any great chances you have to to help the world and your community, by all means, please do. Um, we're, we're all about lifting each other up, even though we vote each other out every week. That's what we do here at Survivor. Well said, well said. All right, Mark, anything you want to talk about? Um, just if you haven't already, check out season one of Survivor Yukon a minute. It's a good time. It's a good season. Um, Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Also, check out the other survivors for uh, colleges like Maryland. Carson, I don't know when Northwestern's coming, but it's coming. Make sure to check that out when that happens. And uh, yeah, that's that's all I got tonight. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Mark. All right, Carson. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a hot sec before Survivor Northwestern comes out. We're working on it. You know, we we started filming back in. 
the spring of of this year, last year, something like that. We've not been around for a long time, but the season that I'm in, season one, is absolutely banging. So what you should do is follow us on our socials so that you are alerted when our season comes out. That's at Survivor Northwestern and Survivor Northwestern on Facebook. We've also got a second season that's being filmed right now, and it has been insane. Um, the teaser I always give for my season is that at one point, five of our contestants voted for each other in a circle. Um, that's the kind of level of strategy that we experience at Survivor Northwestern. So definitely check it out. It's a ton of fun. Thanks for having me again. This was a great episode. Yeah. Thank you for coming out again. We, we love having you. It's nice talking to you, Carson. Um, yeah, the five in a circle. One, one, awesome. one. Yeah, that's ridiculous. One. I know. Uh, I thought that was cool. The only time two, I've one, seen one. something like that, I think the first vote of Millennials versus Gen X, they vote like four people in the square. And then I don't, I don't know if the Borneo merge vote, if that links up in a circle. Probably not, because I think all the Pagans voted for each other like idiots. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> the, first vote, the first vote of Borneo had like four or five different people get their name written down out of eight, and then the merge had equally ridiculous numbers. Had like eight or some shit. It's yeah, the merge was, was a four, like, was like four, two, one, 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 or yeah. something like that. It's very interesting, because that's the final ten of our season. Um, <laughs> and wow. that's where we're at today. I, they, there is this advantage in the game where when you play it, you're safe, and the person that got the second most amount of votes is safe. So it's like a protection for yourself and your enemy, theoretically. So it's a very selfish choice. Um, so their idea was what if we all have the second most amount of votes? And uh, I'll, uh, I won't. <laughs> I won't go into details of how that worked out for them. Um, I like, I like that. <laughs> Magic. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys for coming by. Um, as always, uh, fill out the post episode poll. It's in the description of this, in the description of the episode. Um, follow us on our socials uh, Twitter at survivor.yukon. Uh, Instagram, oh no, Twitter at Survivor Yukon, Instagram at Survivor Yukon. Oh, that's our main feed is the Instagram. Uh, Facebook, just type in Survivor Yukon, will pop up. Uh, obviously, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we have a website um, that's in the descriptions if you want to check us out there. Um, and other than that, uh, thank you, Cooper, for another great edit episode. That was awesome. And uh, we will catch you guys next week. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, have a great night. Thank you.